looking at my slides, I will just say advance. Uh, and uh, we're talking about the tiger in the retroperitoneum. Eighty percent of preventable deaths are from uh, uh, hemorrhage, and hemorrhage in the abdomen is common. Next slide. The o objectives of this talk is to understand retroperitoneal injury, uh, to what is the emergency workup in the emergency center, what is the decision making, what are the exposures, something about control, and a few future uh, surgical, surgical approaches. Next slide. The retroperitoneum has a lot of structures. I will not talk about the kidneys, duodenum, pancreas, or the parts of the colon, but focus on the vasculature. Next slide. Uh, the uh, question that we have is uh, uh, which patients have injury, what causes that injury, and it comes from an, all sorts of trauma, including iatrogenic trauma. Next slide. <clears throat> I want to make a case base of a real case that happened uh, recently. 37-year-old individual who had a uh, fight in a bar, a uh, 38 caliber right, uh, gunshot wound to the right upper quadrant, presented pale, tachycardic, no IV was started in the ambulance, no IV was started in the ambulance, no IV was started in the emergency room. Uh, his pressure was 86 over 50. His pulse was weak. Uh, two bullet wounds in the abdomen, uh, in the front and in the back. Chest x-ray was clear, and the abdomen x-ray showed no bullet. What to, serve, what to do in the emergency center is always a question. This is the, this is the, uh, the options uh, that everyone online uh, would have. The surgeon should be present, and an operating room should be available uh, when you are notified that such a case is coming. So my question to everyone is, what do you do in the EC and resuscitation lab and imaging? Do you give limited crystalloids or two liters? What labs do you order? What central lines are started? Or do you do, just do nothing and go to the operating room? Next slide. So what we did on the case I presented to you, we did a fast chest and abdominal x-ray, 15 seconds. We drew blood for a cross but gave no fluid. Remember, he was hypotensive. He signed an op permit. We started him on a TXA protocol, and we were in the operating room, in the operating room, prepping two minutes after the ambulance stopped. Next slide. So then the next question is uh, what to do in the operating room. Uh, do we need access? Do we need to open them? What It's decision time on exactly what incision to make. What do you think's going on? Remember, this guy's hypotensive. Next slide. So here's the gunshot wound in the right upper quadrant. The abdomen is open in this guy. I've closed up what was in the abdomen to save this for later, uh, later discussion. Next slide. In this, uh, so the question comes, this is on the right side, uh, and we encountered a retroperitoneal hematoma uh, from the midline incision, and that retroperitoneal hematoma uh, was in the midline. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, what was done in the operating room? The question came, uh, what vessel is injured? What should we do? When should we do it? Next slide. This... Um, uh, this uh, retroperitoneal hematoma was not expanding. We kept him hypotensive like we would keep a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm hypotensive, and uh, we're making decisions. Uh, next slide. Uh, we uh, did occlude the aorta with our hand, mainly to feel is there a good pulse at the aorta. It was present. It was hypotensive, and that didn't bother us one iota. Next slide. Anesthesia, meanwhile, had started a central line, of course, had intubated him. Our choices are a medial rotation of the viscera, which you see here, going behind the kidney, uh, on top of the psoas muscle, exposing the aorta. This, this maneuver, if there's an injury, if there's a retroperitoneal hematoma, can literally be accomplished with blunt trauma in somewhere between 15 and 30 seconds. 15 and 30 seconds. Next slide. Uh, and here is a depiction going lateral to the stomach, lateral to the spleen, lateral to the kidney, behind the kidney, 
and reflecting everything midline. Next slide. <clears throat> On the right side, a coker maneuver or a uh, brash cotel maneuver will expose the vena cava and the aorta. We needed to make a decision as to what we do. Next slide. Uh, here is uh, an approach if one has a midline hematoma that appears to be in the area of the uh, uh, mid-retroperitoneum in the portal vein by dividing the pancreas right in the middle with a pair of scissors or with a bovic, uh, uh, one can expose the portal vein. Remember, there are no major branches of the portal vein coming into the pancreas. Uh, and one can expose the portal vein, the superior mesenteric, the splenic, uh, very, very quickly. Next slide. <coughs> so a decision was made. The bleeding we encountered was blue. It was mainly from the right. And so you would need to make a decision. What do you do? Next slide. What we did was a brash cattell uh, maneuver, uh, starting with a uh, coker maneuver, and very rapidly within just... Uh, uh, 15 or 20 seconds, exposing the vena cava by uh, coming down with a brash cattell and going up the root of the mesentery. Next slide. <clears throat> next slide. Uh, next slide. So we encountered then an injury to the vena cava. Here the clamps have been placed on the inferior vena cava. A hole is seen in the inferior vena cava. Uh, next slide. Uh, that hole was uh, rapidly sewn up. Uh, vascular clamps here, you see, have been applied. And uh, uh, with this kind of exposure, a junior resident can sew this up uh, using a 4-0 polypropylene suture in probably two to three minutes. Next slide. Uh, here the uh, vena cava has been repaired. Next slide. Uh, and you see aorta in the background. Uh, occasionally one has a posterior hole as well, and that posterior hole can be repaired by opening and extending the anterior hole and repairing the posterior hole through that open hole in the vena cava. Next slide. <clears throat> Next slide. Uh, uh, in this patient, uh, they also had a minor injury to the right colon and jejunum. These were repaired uh, laterally and we were ready to close within 15 or 20 minutes of when the patient arrived in the operating room and he did well postoperatively. Next slide. Uh, next slide. So the, uh, the question comes, what is in the future? I am here to tell you that what I have told you now is probably archaic and should be abandoned except when you don't have the other technology. New skills should be acquired by the general surgeon New skills should be acquired by the general surgeon performed in the operating room using existing orthopedic C-arm equipment, not fancy uh, 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 billion-dollar uh, hybrid suites. And with that, next slide, one can insert a uh, balloon catheter. Those courses are available. That actually was started back in, in the early 1970s in a number of institutions, including our own, and with new technology that's being developed today, uh, endografts can be placed uh, both in the vena cava and in the aorta, or at least control can be achieved, markedly reducing the amount of blood loss. Next slide. <clears throat> Next. So this retroperitoneal injury is not rocket science. It's simpler than a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Do not be afraid. Have a plan. Just do it. And the general surgeon should reclaim the skills that we had in the 1980s. I share with you that tremendous advances were made between 65 and 1980. The current mortality rate across the world for retroperitoneal vascular injury has not changed one iota since 1980 because we, the general surgeon, have become wimps and no longer are trained in vascular surgery no longer desire vascular surgery, and we want to do everything minimally and single organ. I am here to share with you, it is simple. It should be in the domain of the acute care general surgeon, and it is simpler than a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Next slide. Don't be afraid. You can overcome the tiger if you have the skills, you have the knowledge, 
and you have the courage to fail to help the patient who is depending upon you to just do it. Next slide. Uh, so the new concepts are in the ambulance and the emergency center, no fluid resuscitation, no fluid resuscitation for the person who has the presence of a pulse. The purpose of the emergency center is to wave to the patient as they go from the ambulance dock to the operating room with minimal time for an x-ray and a type and cross. Uh, the patient should be on a vascular table in case you need to arteriogram them or do a venogram, and the surgeon endovascular skills are ours to reclaim. Thank you much for letting me share this with you and look forward to the discussion. Thank you so very much. Very, very provocative and very insightful as always. Uh, superb anatomy and uh, very, very well done. We appreciate it. So let's move I to the panel. I agree with you intensely. It's not provocative. It's the current standard of practice. You just have the courage to go, have to go there. <laughs> Dr. Maddox, are you going to be able to uh, answer a couple of questions or do you have to run? Um, I may have to run, so why don't I get a couple of questions right now? All right. All right. I'll let's try do to that. stay as long as I can. Well, we have one more presentation, uh, which will be another 10 minutes. So uh, I'll, stay, I'll stay. You'll okay. stay on? Okay. All right. All right, good.